Ooh, today's discussion is so good. I've got Dr. Alex Wills on the show. He's a psychiatrist who basically wrote a response, we'll put it that way, <laughs> to the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I don't know if any of you guys read that book, but I did. Um, and he has he has a really amazing and persuasive counter argument to that book. Um, so I really hope you guys listen to this. He's, he has um, what he calls five steps of radical emotional acceptance, right? So many of you who have done CBT or no DBT, I think it's DBT. I don't know. He says in there, sorry, they, they use uh, radical acceptance. I believe it's DBT. And he's talking about radical emotional acceptance. And he has five steps of that, that he's going to get down. He's talking about things like put down your fuck shield, name the fuck, listen to that. Yeah. There's gonna be a lot of F-bombs in this episode. So if that bothers you, like you might want to just skip, <laughs> um, listen to the fuck, act on the fuck, thank the fuck. It's just so good. As I was preparing for this episode, I was doing a lot of these things and I was like, wow, this is super easy to do, easy to remember and very effective. So I'm excited for you guys to dive in with us. Here is Dr. Dr. Alex Wills. All right, Alex, we were just talking about, we were talking about positive psychology. I love positive psychology. Um, but all, and, and also, um, sometimes it's, I've found in myself and in others, it leads to this, like, if I'm feeling anything negative emotionally, that's that something's wrong with me. That's bad. You know? And as I was going through your book, I noticed I, one of the, there was like one sentence that I love so much. And it was like, when I'm in session with someone, I pretend that I'm them. And I'm like, well, yeah, that is empathy, <laughs> complete empathy, you know? And it's like this allowance. Oh, that's, that's what I'm excited to talk to you about today is like allowing yourself to feel all the, the spectrum. Like you call it like a rainbow, like the, the violet or the red or the orange is not bad, but we kind of get like that with emotions. Like say, this is wrong and bad if I feel yeah. that way. So right. let's go through you. You're, well, first of all, like radical emotional acceptance, you know, like first, let's just start off before we kind of get into the nitty gritty. Why did you write this book? Yeah. Well, um, so I'm a psychotherapist, psychiatrist here in Boise, Idaho. Um, I love what I do. I love, you know, working with patients. I love applying, you know, the evidence-based psychotherapies with them. Uh, over time, I'm like, I've got, you know, I'm kind of repeating the same thing with patients again and again. <laughs> and I, I like to reach the masses because mm -hmm. I, I keep seeing miracles. I keep seeing lives change. So awesome. I wanted to get that out there so I could, you know, help more people. I love this so much, so much because as someone who works individually with people, I feel that same, that same pool, you know, um, not trying to like undermine or, you know, dismiss people who aren't working with people individually, but when you're in the trenches every day and it, it's just like, gosh, like this is a huge issue. I have got to like share this more. I, I totally resonate. <laughs> okay. So um, you talked a little bit in the book about, you know, in, is it CBT that has cognitive behavioral therapy that has um, radical acceptance? Is that, is, or is it DBT? Uh, yeah. So radical acceptance um, it's in DBT, DBT as well okay. as um, the, the Tara Brock stuff from Buddhism. Okay. Okay. And then you're talking about radical emotional acceptance. Can you explain the difference? Yeah. So what I noticed is that most of the psychotherapies, including DBT, um, CBT, they're all, um, it's almost like there's this hidden or overt agenda to not feel what we call negative emotions, right? Yeah. Um, and it might be a misuse of Marsha Linehan's desire with DBT, but people are like, how can we, you know, not, how can we deal with the negative emotions, the, the toxic emotions, the yeah. icky emotions, how can we avoid them or fix them, right? And so um, I started to realize with the, these more Buddhist uh, evidence-based psychotherapies that it's more about acceptance, like, but not just accepting the situation, not just accepting the reality around you, but what if we had radical acceptance specifically for our emotions? And what if the negative emotions weren't actually negative, although they might be painful, although they might be scary, or they might be intensely sad, what if they're actually good for us? What if they're trying to help us? And then there's no longer a problem. That's a scary thought for a lot of people, right? Because it's like, I want out of this now. <laughs> what have you found in working with people? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, let's say you're just like feeling hopeless and despair and like, why do I even exist? Why do I even matter? You right. know, that's a, it's a scary thought to accept that. What are your yeah. thoughts around that? 
And, and that's the reason why, you know, the world around us is trying to focus on, well, how can we help you not feel that way? The goal yeah. is that you don't feel so bad, right? Right. But we've inadvertently created a problem because if we want to get rid of truth, if we want to get rid of the fact that some emotions are painful for a good reason, then we create a battle with reality. We create a, right. a battle with our, our right brain, our emotional brain, our, our body, and then we get stuck. That's the reason we get stuck is because we're not accepting like, okay, it's okay to have these um, temporary painful, sad emotions, and let's see how they're trying to help us to move mm -hmm. towards the direction we want to go for our desires. That's kind of the perfect segue to your five steps, right? Because your first one is put down your fuck shield, right? right. Put down the shield, right? And, and and I did this as I was like preparing for this. I was like, oh yeah, this 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 really works, right? It's like just what am I feeling right now, right? Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through this? Like, what? Why did you start this as your first of the five steps? Put down your fuck shield. Well, you know the the quintessential example of a, a shield emotion or a defense mechanism. Uh, anger can be used as a shield emotion. It's it's very easy to get in touch with anger because when you're angry, no one's going to fuck with you because you're yeah. going to kill, right? So it's a very empowering emotion. Mm -hmm. However, um, behind that anger shield is, uh, you know, more vulnerable emotions. You might be scared. You might be hurt. You might be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you might be lonely. You know, the, the emotion of loneliness can be so painful. So mm -hmm. we're not going to get to the root of what's really our truth if we just, you know, stick in that ang stick with that anger as a way of avoiding those deeper vulnerable emotions. Yeah. You listed off anger. And then I liked uh, self-righteousness. Oh, that one's so good as a shield emotion. Like, well, I'm just right. So yeah. right. that's, <laughs> and, that's another, you know, they're, they're often very empowering. You know, if, if you've mm -hmm. ever felt self-righteous, I, I mean, I think we've all felt that way. Oh yeah, I have definitely. Like, no, I'm, I'm right. Everybody else is the bad <laughs> world screw you i mean and and then you feel really good for a hot minute but that that doesn't last right mm -mm, mm -mm. and then annoyance i love that as an example as well feeling really annoyed mm -hmm. it's like that that's for me like when i'm feeling with my kids i have four kids with my kids when i'm feeling like frustrated i'm like what if you can go under that annoyance it's like oh man there's some juice under there there's so many belief systems, yeah. like not even hidden that low under, if you can just be like, why am I feeling this way right now? But you're right. It's, it's accepting that noticing, right. I, it, do you find that sometimes we tend to, as human beings, like not even notice we, that it's a shield emotion, right? It's just, right. yeah. So you know, I love that um, you're. The, the five steps um, can be practiced like literally once yeah. you practice it um, in 10 seconds, 20 seconds, yeah. um, you, you can become very good at it. Um, at first, it might take a couple hours to, you know, recognize and you might have to kind of think back because you might be so angry in the heat of the moment that you lose all sense of reality. So you might have to, you know, journal or kind of retroactively kind of process what happened and, until it becomes more like your go to. Yeah. I love the emotional awareness you're creating with this. Cause I've just been like driving around. I was driving around and just, I didn't even think I was feeling anything, you know, like I wasn't, and it was just like, what are you feeling right now? And I'm like, yeah. huh, I'm feeling nervous. What are you feeling nervous about? You know, like right. it's awesome to tap us back into our emotions. This is in my work too. Like when, when my clients do their gratitude journal, I have them write emotions with it. Cause I'm just trying, we are like, we are like so behind on emo cause emotions have been poo pooed for right. so long. Like, uh, I'm like, I, sorry for my listeners. I've heard this before, but it's like, no one ever says you're being an intellectual mess or you're <laughs> an intellectual wreck. Like it's fine to be all up in your mind, but emotions. Oh, you're a mess. Oh, you're a wreck. You know? Yeah, like absolutely. Absolutely. So we're like kind of behind. <laughs> so I appreciate you doing this. Okay. Number two, name, name the fuck. Okay. Let's right. talk about that one. Yeah. So once you drop the fuck shield, you can name the fuck. And, you know, for people out there that don't know, fuck is just really used for emotions. Uh, you know, it can be positive emotion or happy emotion, um, or we think of, you know, one of those painful or scary emotions. So it might take you 10 seconds to list out, you know, right now I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling a bit of fear. I'm feeling a little bit of confusion. I'm feeling uh, some loneliness. I'm feeling a, a little bit of joy and hope. And yeah. uh, in that short of a time, you could be like, okay, those are like my top six emotions. And these are the intensities. And that's, mm. that's the source of like your emotional data. 
Mm, yeah, I love this emotional data. I love it. Okay. And number three, listen to the fuck. So what yeah. does that mean? So after you uh, kind of take your catalog of your emotional data, the next step is to become curious about it. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my favorite psychotherapies is called internal family systems. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, a, it's not family therapy, but it's about yeah. your internal family of your different like personalities, your different subparts. And it's by this guy, Richard Schwartz out of Harvard. It's genius. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the things he teaches is the seven C's and one of the C's is curiosity. I so curiosity that. is my favorite C. So instead of trying to fix or change or suppress your emotions, you simply just like spend some time with these little parts of yourself as uh, being curious. Like, what are you here for? What are you trying to tell me? How are you Mm -hmm. trying to help me? How are you trying to heal me? Mm -hmm. And with curiosity, you start to get some really great wisdom um, that you're listening to. Yeah. And there's so much self-compassion and self-acceptance wrapped up into that instead of, you know, this it's, it's kind of like, it reminds me of like, I do a lot of gut stuff in my work and like, it's like, kill everything bad, kill it, kill it, kill it. Or like our really sanitizes, kill everything. And it's like, no, they're part of the greater whole. Just like our emotions were like, I don't want to feel that kill it. I'm not going to feel that. I'm not feeling socially anxious. I'm not feeling, you know, it's just like this, like avoidance, you know? And I, I have to say also, if you guys haven't read no bad parts, the book about internal family systems, I use that in my coaching as well, quite a bit. Cause it's so helpful. Yeah. It's, that's great. Yeah. I wonder why I wonder what's going on. Like it's so, um, self honoring, honestly, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and if you think, you know, of these, um, emotions as like, different little parts of yourself or little, little inner children parts or whatever you like to, you know, whatever helps you. Mm -hmm. Um, If you think about suppressing them, shutting them up, uh, fixing them, uh, you're kind of declaring war on yourself Mm -hmm. or you're gaslighting yourself. You're telling yourself that you shouldn't have these parts or you shouldn't feel how you feel. And Mm -hmm. so if you do the opposite and, you know, take these different parts of yourself um, as yourself, then that's a way to become more integrated. Yeah, I have, I love analogies. So like I'm, my mind's always going to them. And I, I have one called toddler behind the baby gate that reminds me of this. Cause you know, I've, I've kids and like, what happens if you have a toddler behind a baby gate in the other room and you're like ignoring them. And at first they're like, eh, eh, and then you like, keep ignoring them. They get louder. They get louder and louder. They'll start shaking it. They start crying, you know? And you like, finally you like get face to face with them and you're like, what's going on? And they're like, I saw a bug or something, you know, they just wanted to be heard. Right. And so, yeah, this ignoring thing, like anybody who's had kids and you ignoring your kids, you know, you know that that does not work. (laughs) They're going to start manifesting like usually negative quote unquote behaviors to be heard and seen. You know? So I love that you're, it's like, Hey, just listen, just listen, just take a second. Yeah, you know, um, the subtitle of my book is Reclaim Yourself with the Five Steps of Radical Emotional Acceptance. And um, I, I kind of nicknamed her Rhea. So Radical Emotional Acceptance is Rhea. And, mm-hmm. you, you know, when you apply Rhea, you know, to yourself, uh, it's amazing. When you apply it to your children, when you're parenting, and how can you, you know, raise an emotionally intelligent child when they have their emotions come up? What if we apply the five steps with them? Yeah. So that they can start to learn to name, you know, build an emotional vocabulary, uh, learn that it's okay to have the full spectrum of emotions, just like it's okay to see the full spectrum of colors. Yeah, exactly. I, one of my sons feels big emotions, big, big, big. And like, he's a teenager now, but like, you know, growing up when he would get in the, it's like, (laughs) I definitely learned I had to like wait a little bit because I'd be like, what are, what's going on? Like, what are you feeling right now? And he's like, no, (laughs) but the answer finally was like, usually I don't know. Like I literally don't know, like get out of my face. (laughs) He didn't say that, but that was the vibe. Right. And so I've learned to kind of let him be in it a little bit, but it it was astonishing to me that even when he was calmed down, his nervous systems regulated and all that, he still was like, I don't know what I'm feeling, you know? So like kids need help with that. So do we, but yeah, yeah. you know, and just sit, sitting with your child when they're, they're in that anger and just, you know, being that calm presence and being like reflecting mm-hmm. back, you know, mm-hmm. wow, you, you look so angry right now and, and that's okay. And you just yeah. you know give them your, you know, unconditional presence, unconditional mm-hmm. love. And, and when they start to calm down, you might, you know, they might not have the vocabulary, but you might notice, 
you, you know, you, you kind of look a little bit sad right now. Do you, are you feeling a little bit sad? And then yeah. if you're, if you're wrong, they're going to maybe correct you and say, well, yeah. maybe not sad, but, uh, are you feeling, are you feeling let down? And, you know, just by kind of letting them sort of pick and choose, that's the way that they can kind of, you know, guide their way. Or you might show them one of those emoji charts with all the different faces. Like what yeah. face do you feel like most right now? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. My son does it back to me now. Like if I'm really <laughs> tired, he'll be like, mom, are you okay? Are you sad? I'm like, no, no, babe, I'm just tired. Or sometimes I'll be really vulnerable. I'm like, I'm really stressed out about this project I have. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not sad. I'm just, I am stressed. I'm kind of in my mind about it, you know? And just having yeah. that combo, I think is, is having that open is really helpful. So. And for any relationship, whether it's with your yeah. kids or your significant other, um, another one, you know, my favorite couples therapy is the emotionally focused therapy hmm. and the, the super, you know, Jedi mind trick is if you can make your partner aware of your emotional state, yeah. like, Hey, these are my emotions and this is the intensity right now. It creates automatically empathy in your partner, unless yeah. they happen to be a, a legit sociopath, but yeah. it's really the way that we can connect better in relationships. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And it takes, it's kind of like boundaries. It's like, you got to know yourself first. So like you got to kind of tap into that so you can communicate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So number four is act on the fuck. What does that mean? Yeah, it's act um, or possibly not act on the fuck. Cause sometimes once you get to number four, you might realize that the best decision is to, is to do nothing. You might realize that I don't really have to respond. I don't have to you know, yeah. fight somebody, or, or you might decide that you might need to take a massive action. You know, yeah. um, I'm going mm -hmm. through something right now in my personal life that um, has me having, you know, huge, intense waves of fear, um, disappointment, regret. And because of my emotional intelligence, the emotions, um, the emotional wisdom, uh, it's motivated me to take some massive action, some really great, you know, proactive action to uh, take care of this problem that's going on. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think I would have been able to take the best steps and to be so proactive with all the motivation if I didn't tune into these very painful and uncomfortable emotions that are going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I've been there, I've been there's some deep personal life shifts and it gets to, to me, it's always like it, when I notice my feelings over and over and over Cause it's tricky, right? Like, cause your mind might be like, yeah, everything is good. Everything is blah, blah, blah. And it's just this super, I, and the mind is great, but the emotions are like, if it's constantly like it's worth diving into and yeah, you get to a point where you're like, okay, I have to honor this. This is not uh, something I'm just going to mindset away or like, this is just how I feel. And I'm just right. going to accept that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, okay. with, you know, with uh, radical emotional acceptance, um, I like the visual image of keeping the door to your heart open no, um, all of the time. So mm. it doesn't have to be a process of like building up, building up, building up, and then acknowledging the emotions. Um, it can start to just be instantaneous. Like, wow, I just noticed an emotion of jealousy pop up. Or yeah. wow, I just noted yeah. an, an emotion of, of disgust or hate pop up. And yeah. just in real time being like, okay, what, how is that helping me right now? with that curiosity. So, um, it's a completely kind of rewiring the way that we would normally think about emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember who said this It's probably somewhere from the Byron Katie camp, but it's just like, just because you had a thought, like it, it just doesn't mean it's true. You don't have to stick with that one. Just, it's like, Oh, screw them. They're probably bad people and don't deserve that. If you're feeling jealousy, you know, it's like, Whoa. Yeah. Okay, let's, I wonder why I'm feeling like that. Yeah. And I like the kind of, what am I getting out of that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and that's um, actually um, a super key point, which is um, I define emotions as those pure visceral feelings you get in your body. Yeah. Um, they just kind of happen to you. Um, they don't need any explanation. So if I tell you yeah. that I'm sad or joyful or, you know, feeling mm -hmm. disgusted, you, you can have a really big sense of what, what my emotions are without knowing any of the background story, yeah, right? Yeah. But when you add a story to yeah. an emotion, that becomes a feeling. Um, at least that's how yeah. I define a feeling. I love that. And, you know, oftentimes these stories are toxic. They're not true. They're, right. they're destructive. So we have to, you know, disbelieve those um, stories that are really not helping us and if they're not accurate. How do you, let's hang on that one for a second. Okay. So let's say you're feeling fear, 
about you're starting a business or something and you're feeling a bunch of fear and like, you're kind of confused of like, is this like legit? Is this like a bad feel? Like I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Or is this like a story that I have that I won't be successful? You know what I, you know, when you get in those confusing, like, what is this? What do you recommend for moments like that? Yeah, exactly. Um, so step four, you know, act on the fuck, you know, there's, I, I think of confusion as an emotion, right? So yeah. when you're starting a business, when you're putting yourself out there, when you're, you know, doing new things, um, you don't have all the answers. And so mm-hmm. it can be scary and there could be confusion. And mm-hmm. so with confusion, um, the step four might be, you know what? I need to ask for help or I need to get more information. Yeah. Um, I tell people my only superpower is asking for help. In the last mm-hmm. eight years of running a private practice, the thing I've gotten really, really good at is learning how to ask for help effectively, how to get the help I need, knowing who to go to, to get effective help that I can afford. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that's really been everything for me. Yeah. I love your, uh, identification of confusion. And I've like, you know, intuitively been taught over and over. It's like, if you're feeling like that, just ask more questions, ask more questions, more questions, more, 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 more. Okay. There you go. (laughs) Because it's usually like, we're trying to figure it all out in our minds. And it's like, you, it's that elementary school, not enough information, yeah. answer, you know, <laughs> and that, you know, that echoes back to the, the four agreements, which a, is a book a lot of us are yeah. familiar with. And so that was definitely a huge inspiration, Um, you know, just to not make assumptions and to yeah. ask more questions, because yeah. otherwise those toxic stories can just take off, you know? Yes. I am still constantly learning that one. It is, you know, it's just like, oh, okay. Ask, ask. Cause once you, I have found, once I have more information, it's just like all that goes away, you know? So yeah. Okay. Number five is thank the fuck. What does this mean? So this is my favorite step. Um, You know how they teach you to do gratitude journaling? Yeah. And like when you're feeling depressed, you should like write down stuff you're thankful for. Yeah. Um, I always hated that. I always thought it was bullshit. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm thankful for the sky. I'm thankful (laughs) for the oxygen in my lungs. I'm I'm thankful (laughs) for my friends and family. It's like, like, no shit. Like, I I know. Um, Uh One day I had a personal epiphany was like, wow, what? what if I can actually find true gratitude for my problems? And then I eventually applied that to emotions. So if you can somehow creatively find um, sincere, and it has to be sincere, you can't fake it, right? But sincere gratitude for your sadness, sincere gratitude for your fear, sincere gratitude for your hopelessness. Um, then there no longer is a problem because you realize all of these emotions are trying to help you. And if you're thankful, then they're going to guide you where you need to go. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? When someone's been through like really severe trauma that they're trying to get over, like it's bad, like bad, you know, something Mm -hmm. horrific happened. Yeah. I've, I've learned from people in grief or, you know, processing really traumatic things that sometimes that can be triggering. It's like, yeah, I don't want to be thankful that my child died. (laughs) I don't want to be, you know? And so like, how, in terms of, cause like, you know, people who are in trauma, like grief, especially grief is, woo, grief is brutal. Um, what do you recommend on this process for somebody like that, where it's really deep, you know? Yeah. And, and I mean, we take trauma very seriously. Mm-hmm. It, it can be very deep. Um, we're mm-hmm. not trying to offer quick, easy solutions. Yeah. To people who may have, you know, a serious PTSD going on. Right. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, however, you know, if, if one, if, uh, if, my child died, I, I imagine I, I would, you know, I, I would never, you know, be happy that that happened. Right. Right. <laughs> however, however, I would have such profound sadness and such deep, unbearable, overwhelming grief. Yeah. And I, w- I would be thankful for that because that's a, just a true reflection of how much I loved my child. I love that answer. Yeah. You know? I think back to loss in my own life. And when I think of, you know, certain relationships that I lost against my own will, I I still have some intense sadness pop up from time to time. But but I like that because it it really is just uh, reflecting the truth of how much I love that person. Yeah. Yeah. I I love that. Okay. In terms of um, like men and women, Have you noticed any patterns? I I could be, maybe it's all the same, but I'm just curious. Have you noticed any patterns of like typical numbing? uh, What do you call these? Your oh, shield emotions. Have you noticed any patterns with that? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess in broad strokes, um, you know, men might be more likely to, you know, veg out into video games uh, or alcohol or whatnot. Women might be, you know, more likely to to go shopping or possibly get caught up in, in gossip. I mean, and everyone's different. There's like, you know, a huge back and forth. But um, I mean, we 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 do all kinds of things to um, suppress our emotions mm-hmm. and to try to avoid them or try to fix them. Um, and if you've traveled the world a lot, you'll notice every culture sort of has their own brand of um, fuck suppression or emotional yeah. suppression. Yeah. Like uh, I spend a lot of time in Japan and uh, the the quality and the the versions of fuck suppression are very effective, but they're very different than in America, you know? Interesting. Yeah, I, I I always give the example of suddenly I need to organize my pantry <laughs> when the, the avoidance you're randomly <laughs> doing this stuff or yeah, alcohol. I've definitely can we can we hit on that one for a second? Sure. Uh, alcohol. Have you noticed? I'm just curious in your line of work. Have you noticed certain? Because I always when my clients are dealing with alcohol, my question is always what 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 if you could put it into one word what are you getting out of it? Like what emotion, what do you feel? What's Mm -hmm. the thing drawing you that you want? Like, I would need that to get what? Mm -hmm. And it is literally like 90. I mean, it's gotta be like over 90%. It's almost every time. I think I've heard one other answer. It's the word relief. Yeah. Well, as you know, um, or you may know, uh, in mom's breast milk, there's casomorphine. So, so there's a type of opioid in in mom's breast milk. No, I did not know that. Yeah, even since infancy, we were um, <laughs> addicted, or, or we were wow. um, we were affected by opioids, and and that helps with that sense of bonding and and well being. Yeah. I don't know. You mentioned that you had uh, children, so yeah. if you remember after um, breastfeeding, uh, the the infant just can look so content and just yeah. like, absolutely almost like uh, somebody who's had a few drinks can. Just no, they do. They look there. completely drunk. No, a hundred percent. And like, they're not fussy. Like you could, you could, uh, accidentally pinch them or something and they're not even going to cry. They're just like, I'm good. True. And so they're like, alcohol hits the, um, opioid receptor. Wow. Um, you know, we do have, uh, some medications that block that in order to unaddict people to alcohol. So I mm-hmm. think Mm-hmm. If you do have a uh, painful emotion, scary emotions, alcohol is very, very effective of giving you that sense of mommy, the sense of belonging, the sense of well-being, wow. the sense of um, pleasure. And, and that's why it can be so addicting and so effective to do that. But obviously, if we use that um, too much, or if that's mm-hmm. kind of our go-to, mm-hmm. then we can uh, suppress the emotions indefinitely and, and just sort of never get better, right? Yeah. I think your process would actually be really helpful. Cause as I'm working with people through this, like usually what happens is they're triggered in their relationship. They trigger a bunch of stuff happened at work and they just not processing any of it. It's just boiling up to the top and they just want out, you know, yeah. but I, I do feel like I'm always trying to give my clients like little things they can do on their drive home to, to like tap into like, what are the stories I had about these triggers? I use a lot of Byron Katie stuff in, in my mm-hmm. coaching, but it's just, you know, like if you can, but I think this would be a super, cause you're right. It's like, it can happen in like 10 to 30 seconds of like, what am I feeling? Okay. What, what's going on? Like just that, you know, that's yeah. self-soothing. It, it's another method for self-soothing. So I, I love that. Yeah. And um, since you've, uh, you've mentioned Byron Katie, you know, I'm definitely a fan of her work. Um, I think I referenced her book at the end of mine. Um, what I noticed is that a lot of people would, um, you know, get a lot out of the Byron Katie stuff, you know, the work that she does. Mm-hmm. Um, but some people would um, maybe slightly misuse it as a way to, uh, I guess, have another shield emotion or yeah. emotionally bypass. It's like, if I totally. just follow the Byron Katie stuff, then this is a way that I don't have to deal with any painful emotions, right? I can definitely see that. Yeah. So a big conceptualization of my work is that I'm sort of applying the Byron Katie stuff mm-hmm. um, and including emotions too, where, you know, we're no longer at a war with reality. And yeah. part of that reality is our emotional reality. Yeah. It's okay that you feel, yeah, I, I I can definitely get that for me. I have to work through it to a point where it's like, this really resonates. I see. I see. But it, I will say sometimes like when I'm changing my stories about triggers and all that, there is a, there is a little piece where I'm not like really addressing why I got so triggered about that though. You know what I mean? So I feel like you're pulling that piece in, which is super cool. Um, 
Okay. Um, hold on. I had one more about, where is it? I, I don't know. I don't see them. I, I, I wanted to ask about, um, emotional masks, you know, like, have you found that people tend to kind of like, like I'll use binge eating as an example. A lot of times what's really interesting to me is people will binge eat on the same foods. It's the same thing. Like they're like eating healthy. And then it's like for that one person, it's butter pecan ice cream. And for that uh, at this one place with that shake, you know, and then somebody else it's sour candy. Like it's just, this, you know, and like everybody has their different go-tos. Do you feel like people have different go kind of go-to emotional mass that they could become more aware of when they're in that state or I guess shields, um, you know, these, you know what I'm saying? Like a constant yeah. go-to spot. Have you found that? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I always want to ask the question, if you notice yourself doing like a behavior or, you know, mask, if you're trying to, um, avoid any emotions, um, ask yourself the question, you know, what am I trying to avoid? If you find yourself, you know, binge eating ice cream or going yeah. crazy with the Sour Patch Kids, yeah. um, as you're sitting there munching away, and as you also get that opioid hit from from that, yeah, yeah. Um, you you can sort of be like, you know, I wonder why I'm doing this. Uh, yeah. What what emotions would I not like to have right now? And mm -hmm. and then you can kind of go into that and like, you know, you're, you're going to be kind of in an okay state of mind because yeah. because of what the substance is doing for you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I always say that too. I'm like, you're not like, it's actually smart. Like you're boosting all the neurochemicals that are like helping you deal with whatever you're going through. It's just the fallout kind of sucks if you're trying to lose weight, you know, <laughs> right. but it's actually like, there's a reason you're drawn to do that. You know, it's, it's actually smart if you don't mind gaining weight and being inflamed and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> but you're right. Like I've, I, when I was overcoming that stuff myself, I would do that. I was like, what? Just, hey, it's just, put, I like to put my hand on my heart. For, it's just like a good cue for me. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And, you know, I, I always, I call it the, the cool guy, the cool guy comes out. It's like, I don't want to freaking talk about it, you know, Yeah. <laughs> but after a minute it's like, okay, it's safe here. So I, I love that answer. Um, okay. So top advice for people who are struggling emotionally a lot. Mm -hmm. Just, um, ask yourself if, um, these emotional struggles, what if they are actually not a problem? What, what wow. if they are trying to help you? And then your new question becomes, okay, how, how are these painful, difficult, unpleasant emotions, my best friends, how are they giving me the help that wow. I'm not getting from any, anywhere else? And yeah, it might be tough. It's by definition, you know, painful, but that's, that's the way that you can, you know, come back to, um, pursuing your desires that they're making you aware of too. Wow. That's a radical <laughs> way of thinking, right? What if there's nothing wrong with me? What if, what if I can accept this? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much guys. You can check all of this out at radical emotional acceptance.com. Um, probably you said everywhere books are sold and right. again, give a fuck actually. Okay. Last thing real quick, like subtle art of not giving a fuck your book. Can you explain the difference and why, why, you know, where you stand on that? Yeah. So I read the, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. And, uh, the first time I read through it, I thought, Okay, this is this is kind of clever. Um, I'm you know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try this out, see how it goes. Uh, but something kind of kept nagging at me and it didn't quite gel with like uh the Buddhist influence of psychotherapies and and you know, true acceptance of emotions. And so um mm -hmm. I actually read the book again and I had a little conversation with the book. And so wow. every chapter I read, I kind of um, you know, had a little bit of a dialogue. And uh, a lot of that, you know, influenced um, you know, my book to say, like, wait a minute all of this emotional suppression and fuck picking, it seems like a lot of energy. And at the end of the day, um, it's not really solving anything like, yeah, it works for a, for a hot minute until it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and so I, it turns out I had a lot to say. And so here, yeah. here comes uh, give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> give a fuck. Actually. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks for putting in the work. I know writing a book is not an easy task. It's like, Oh, I'll just write a book <laughs> years later to a year later, at least, at least for it was for me. So anyway, thank you for doing the work on top of all the work you're doing with clients. I know it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate you getting this out there. We'll link everything up in the show notes and yeah. Can't thank you enough. Thanks so much for having me on. It's been great.